All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's TrekCast, the galaxy's most unpredictable Star Trek podcast. And, of course, today it's unpredictable for lots and lots and lots of reasons, <laughs> one of which being that Daniel Reyes is not here. Mm. Uh, so he's under the weather. He's got something. Did he ever actually get a test back at this point to say whether or not he has COVID? I don't know. I talked to him uh, last night when you did. I didn't talk to him this morning at all. Okay, okay. So... I don't so, know. We'll keep them, you know, we'll keep them in our thoughts. Hopefully it's just the yeah. flu and it's nothing more serious than that. So, yep. And uh, keep you posted on how, he, how he's feeling. So, it's been. We're sending, the, we're sending the, the cat doctor. She's on the grumpy cat doctor. There you go. <laughs> it's on her way over there. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember her name. I can't I'm either. So terrible. When, I know. You know, when it comes to new, new Star Trek, I, I don't know anybody. <laughs> yeah, what is her name? Jeez, I don't even know. Um, I should know this, but I'm going to look it up. We're gonna look it up while we're talking here, anyway. So it's like you know, she's a cat, so I want to be like uh, right. Sparkles, Doctor Doctor Sparkles. That's it. We'll just go with that, Doctor Sparkles. <laughs> Doc Doc Sparkles. Yep. I mean, oh, Tiana, is it Tiana? No, that maybe, sounds like. Maybe. Uh, you gonna that, make me look it up? I'm looking it up right now. That sounds Tiana sounds like it's from something else, but. Uh, God, we're so horrible. <laughs> yeah, no, it's Tiana. T- Tiana. Yeah, Tiana. it is Tiana. Yep. Okay. Well, there you go. Yep. Learned something new today. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the so more thanks you know. for stopping by. That's our show. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Dan. That's Chad. The Daniel's grumpy cat the is Tiana. <laughs> well, at this point, I think he was telling us last night, he'd, 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 where the hell is Dr. Flox when you need him? <laughs> yeah. You need someone to stick leeches on your privates to suck out the venom or whatever. (laughs) That's what's going on here. (laughs) Leeches on your privates. Well, he did say he's dating. You know, yeah, that that would go. That would go with the last episode. Oh my god! Holy cow, man! (laughs) Oh man! I thought I was watching Rick and Morty for a moment when that started happening. I was like, no, they're not. They're not going there. Oh, they went there. Oh, they went further. I didn't watch it with my son this week, and I'm kind of glad I did. Yeah, I think that's not. Skip, that's... I think we're gonna skip that one. Yep, yep. That but, was pretty. Uh, uh, that was pretty hysterical. But I mean, we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll, we'll get, get to that. To that. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how has your week been? <laughs> uh, all right. I guess. Um. Yeah, it's been raining like crazy. Oh yeah. You know, the. Uh, you know, it's hurricane season, so yeah. we don't get the hurricanes as often, but, you know, you do get the after effects. You do get the five days of rain. Yeah, I guess I didn't so, even think about all that stuff this last week hitting you. I didn't even think about it at all. Oh, I yeah. apologize, man. Yeah. Yeah. So. No, we're good. We're good here. But, you know, I got a buddy who owns a he owns a vintage toy shop in the next county, hmm. and he put a he put a video up on on Facebook and, uh <laughs> You know the GI Joe hovercraft that they always they always uh, advertise that it really floats. Yeah. And, you know he put up some video of it floating around the basement of the store. So ah. he's like, yes, it does, it does really float. So <laughs> you know I have a dehumidifier and I have one of those industrial fans like uh, like you know you go in the rest stop and they have that the, the big fan that blows. It blows the air along the floor. Right, not, right. Not the, you know, not up too high. I have one of those, so I ran that over to him. Looks like a so fat been... turbocharger almost with the yeah, coil. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. So he's been drying his basement out. Um, you know, a couple of local counties had, you know, states of emergency, different roads washed out and uh. stuff like that. But knock on wood, where I am, you know, I was worried about getting a little, uh, little water in the basement, and I got nothing. Good, so good. I'm I'm good with that. Yeah. Which I don't which I don't understand because over the summer we had a you know three days of rain and my whole basement was you know was wet. But we get five days of rain, hurricane season. Nothing. Nothing. Bone bone dry. Huh. So I don't know if something was stuck in the gutters a month ago and it's out now or, Maybe, or what. Maybe yeah, but who knows? Who knows? Water goes and follows the path of least resistance. So you just That's never it. know what the hell it's gonna do and you know, if your house it. might have settled a little bit from that last one and then actually sealed a crack, you never know. I mean, yep, yep. <laughs> weirder things you know, it, had, it, 
it has to do sometimes with the state of the vegetation around your house. Yeah. How much water? Yeah. How much water is that vegetation sucking up? Yep. If you got five days, if you got five days of rain, but it was two weeks of drought before that, you know, none of that water is making it. Yeah. Past the first few inches, those, you know, those roots are sucking that up. So right. it's just it's weird. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's all a matter of how much and how fast, too. I mean, we can have one night where it rains for an hour and we'll get water in the basement because it's just a freaking downpour. And it, yeah. and it has to be coming in at a specific angle in order for it. And it's very little water, but, I mean, it's enough to irritate you. But if it's yeah. coming in at a specific angle to hit the front left corner of the house, heavy, like yeah. it has to be really heavy, then we'll get a little bit of water in the basement. Other than that, yeah. you know, not that big of a deal. But, yeah, it's kind of funny that way. We didn't have uh, we didn't ha- I, w- I was gone all week so I, I don't know we, it rained Friday um, it was it was raining on the flight when I landed Friday uh, evening and it was raining a little bit yesterday but other than that it's I think the rain's done and I might be able to mow on Monday uh, before uh, the week starts um, the yeah I was gonna mow wet. today I was gonna mow today and I woke up and I heard the rain it started raining again yeah so we had nothing yesterday no. it started raining again today no. so gotta wait. Yep. Carry the old yard up. Welcome to Yardcast. Yep. Get off yard my lawn. Yardcast. Weathercast. <laughs> <laughs> Forecast. Forecast. Yeah, because there's only two of us with four eyes. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> let's uh, let's just get right into the news. <laughs> And since Daniel's not here, I had to do a Google search right before the show started for our. That's right. <laughs> for That's our right. I got some backup. I got some backup stories for you. If, uh... Cool. Yeah. Yeah. If I don't hit the ones you want me to hit, then uh, then we'll just both sure. news. It'll be fine. Whatever. So the first one isn't so much news because I'm sure that anybody listening to this show already knows about this, but I just wanted to give it a rundown real quick. Star Trek Day is Wednesday, September eighth. Uh, right? Wednesday, September eighth. Yeah, Wednesday. I don't know when did they come up with September eighth as. Star Trek Day. I thought it was supposed to be First Contact Day, which is, which is April. I thought that was the thing they were trying to. I, I don't know. They were trying to do. I don't know. But this is now Star Trek Day. It's hashtag Star Trek Day on Twitter. It's uh, okay. Wednesday, September eighth at five thirty p.m. Pacific time or eight thirty p.m. Eastern. It'll be live from Skirbel Cultural Center in Los Angeles, California. Star Trek Day will be hosted by Will Wheaton, Micah Burton, and feature a Will live... Wheaton. Oh, yeah, Will Wheaton's going to host it. Will. Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton, yes. Uh, live orchestra composed by Jeff Russo. Back-to-back in-person conversations with cast members, creative minds from the Star Trek universe, legacy moments with iconic cast, plus surprise announcements and reveals throughout. So uh, they've actually got the panels broken down now over on StarTrek.com slash day. Uh, panel number one is a Star Trek Day introduction, which means this is why this is probably the 30 seconds. This is why we're doing it on September 8th for no fucking reason. Uh, and then panel two is welcome remarks. That's where Mike and Will will start it off. Panel three is all about Star Trek Prodigy. Panel four is legacy moments of D Space Nine, and it looks like uh, Sirak uh, Loft, whatever his name is, uh, Jake is going to be hosting that. Sirak Loft. Yeah, Sirak Lofton. Panel number five is about Discovery, and it looks like uh, Daniel's favorite, uh, the Doctor, uh, will be doing that one. Colber? Yeah, it's Colber. Mm-hmm. I'm horrible. Um, yep, we were just talking about yeah, this. Yeah, I know. We're just, we're <laughs> I don't just, know anybody's yeah, name. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Trek Cast, the only Star Trek podcast where the hosts don't have a fucking clue what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, panel six is Legacy Moments Enterprise with, of course, the most iconic Enterprise actor in all of of Enterprise. Joe Dirt. Yeah. Joe he, Dirt. No. It, yeah. It, it, that would be better, actually. You know who it is? It's going to be Mayweather. <laughs> The guy who played Mayweather. All right. He's all right. Well, uh, uh, okay. Uh, you don't like pan- Mayweather? What? <laughs> <laughs> you don't like Mayweather? No, I like Mayweather, but like he was a character they never did anything. He wasn't a major character, really. I mean, they tried to make what him a major character. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? He's born in outer space. He was like the first. He was a space trucker. Like, trucker, yeah, space trucker. He was a space That's trucker, right. yeah. <laughs> Good lord. Uh, panel number seven. You know what they should have done for him? They should have had him always wearing a baseball cap with a mesh back, but he wears it way too high on his head. <laughs> yes. And he should have had a bag of uh, 
either Doritos, Cheetos, or maybe um, pork rinds with him everywhere he went. Pork rinds. That's what it would have been. Right. That would have been perfect. Is that, is that trucker food? That's pork, rinds? pork rinds is trucker food. Oh, man. Okay. I've seen truckers by, I mean, because I stop at gas stations and I'm going all over the nine yeah. states I go to. So I see truckers everywhere I go. The number one thing they get is the large, gigantic, like, how are you not peeing every five minutes, uh, cups of, of coffee and or Coke, right? And it's like, I don't know how you can drink that and not have to stop constantly. But Well, do you want to know? Yeah, they pee in a cup as they're driving. Yeah, next yeah. time you're at the light at the end of an off-ramp, look at the side of the road. Yeah, you, yeah, they're dumping You know, all those, pep, all those Pepsi bottles that look like they have Mountain Dew in them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, and then they're buying pork rinds, or they're buying. I mean, I saw like three guys this last week all buying these big bags of pickles. Like, a, it's one pickle and a bag, and it's like, what the hell is everybody buying these pickles for? A bag of pickles? Yeah, one pickle, one giant pickle in a bag. Okay. This must be like a Minnesota thing. I don't know, because I've never noticed that until this week. Usually it's pork rinds mm. or something like that, but anyway. Okay. So the other panels are uh, Strange New Worlds. How do, how do we. Hold, hold on a minute. Yeah. How do we get to pickles in a bag from... Uh... Good God, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Space Trucker. Space, space Truckers, truckers yeah. It. It's Pickle Rig. Anyway. So... <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to... Daniel's going to be listening. Daniel's going to be listening to this later. He's going to be like, oh, they need me. Oh, th- they we need do. Me. We do. This, I mean, we do. We need you badly, buddy. I mean... Well, that's, that's the great thing about this show that's always been there since day one. You can go back and listen to us in the first episode that actually aired... And even though it's rough, it's like, I don't know what it is about the three of us, man. We have always gotten, a, it's always been good. Like when the three of us are together and doing our thing, it's always good. The banter's good. The yeah. conversation, it's fun. Yeah. I mean, it's always been like that. And, it's, and when one of us is gone, it's like we're missing my left leg. I don't know what to do. So, so I'm probably just talking way too fast because Daniel's not cutting me off and interrupting me and then refocusing me. Oh, no, no, I've been, cu- I've been cutting you off plenty. Yeah, Don't please do, please that. do. Yeah, that's, 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 that's what... a thing that I do. <laughs> <laughs> you record the show, he does the news, I interrupt you guys <laughs> with random shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's what makes it exciting. We never know what yeah. the hell is going to happen. Okay. So the rest of the panels, I mean, there's a ton of them. There's 13 in total. So number seven, I mean, this thing's going to go on for hours with this number of panels. I mean, this, geez, I mean, there's 13 of them. If each one is 20 minutes long, that's that's a long freaking time. So maybe these panels will be all of five minutes. I don't know. But there's a Strange New Worlds panel. Panel. There's another Legacy Moments, uh, Voyager, which looks like Harry Kim. Then there's Voy. a uh, Lower Decks one. They're doing Legacy Moments from Voy? Yeah, from Voy. Yeah. <laughs> Now, panel number ten looks and panel number ten looks interesting because that's a legacy moment one, but it's got an image of Sulu from TOS. So, I mean, if George Takai is on there, that'll be interesting. Um, then panel number eleven's uh, Roddenberry legacy. It's got a picture of Gene. Um, obviously, it'll be his son or somebody else from the family probably talking during that one. And then number twelve is legacy moment, the next generation, and it's got Lavar Burton on there. So uh, that'd be cool. Who is Lavar Burton? <laughs> well, we can't. Never, ever, ever was Jean Luc Picard ever let Jordy host that show because it would put him on Jeopardy. What? It's <laughs> a horrible joke. You can't put yes. Lafar- yeah, you can't put him in Jeopardy. <laughs> anyway, next panel. Yeah, then that next one's Picard uh, with, of course, uh, Jean Luc himself. So, oh, that picture of the guy that's um, Star Trek Day introduction, that is Jeff Russo. I didn't realize who the hell that was. Who's Jeff Russo? The composer. Oh, a lot okay. of a lot of, of uh, music in the last, I don't know how long, has come from Jeff Russo. A long time. Okay. Good stuff. Very good stuff. So that looks to be kind of fun. I mean, that, that looks to be hours of, of fun uh, that night. So I'll have to tune in and watch that, and then we'll talk about that a little bit as well as the next episode of Lower Decks uh, the following weekend. All so, right, cool. That's it for that news. Uh, the next one, which is kind of interesting, um, and I think caught a lot of people off of guard, um, from Deadline, uh, Star Trek Picard picks up Anne uh, Worcestershire, Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce. 
uh, to recur <laughs> as the uh, board queen for season two on mm. Paramount Plus. Now, here's what's interesting about that. They've been filming for quite some time. We know that they've been filming for quite some time. And last I knew, filming was either done or about done. Yeah. But apparently that not. Says, that says to me that these are like flashbacks. That they're flashbacks. So, you know, they really only need... They're really only going to be scenes with either her and Patrick Stewart yeah. or her and, Jer- her and Jerry Ryan. And that's why everyone else is you know, is wrapped yeah. and they're just announcing this now. That's, that's, that's my guess. And the way they word that's it, my guess. That, and that's probably, that's probably true. I mean, they're so far into filming. I don't know how you would announce a new actress this far into filming. If you hadn't, I mean, maybe she's already been on set. Who knows? We'll, we'll find out, but, but that's mm-hmm. not a bad idea. Um, but they do call it a reoccurring role. So that could mean either, I mean, and I've got multiple articles that say that, um, it's not just Deadline, but mm-hmm. Sci-Fi Wire, it's all over the place, where they all say a reoccurring role. So either she's in a couple of episodes as a flashback, or they're going to mm-hmm. use her in, in multiple seasons, which I don't think they've gotten that far. And well, they, they did say that season three is uh, is written. So yeah. maybe they did go that far with it, where, and that's why they waited to announce her, because once they said anything about Borg Queen, that would be a totally, you know, that's an exciting thing, obviously, right? So, um yeah, I guess. I mean, I kind of feel like you know, we're doing this again with the with the Borg. I mean, the last few seasons of Voyager were, you know, Borg, 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 yeah. Borg. Um, last season of Picard was tied into the yeah. Borg. I mean, but how it made many the Borg feel irrelevant? I don't know. Maybe right? they have a maybe they have a great idea. Maybe they have a great idea, and we and 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 we don't know, and it'll be great, but. There's a part of me that's like, again? Well, I mean, okay, so so here's the thing with that, right? So the Borger are not really wrapped up, right? I mean, they're not they're not gone. They're not defeated. They're not destroyed. They're still there. <coughs> they're still there somewhere. They're not completely defeated yeah. at the end of Voyager. They're not completely defeated. Last season, they just looked like an afterthought in terms of, of the yeah. Federation dealing with the Borg. Yeah, they're around. They're somewhere. Or not a really big deal, right? They're not too worried about them at this point. So yeah. for them to kind of come back again makes a little bit of sense just from the overall universe that they're in. I mean, at some point, the Borg got to do something. Either they're going to become irrelevant yeah. and die, or they're going to continue to expand <laughs> and do what they've always done. So, I mean, it makes sense that they'd be involved in some way, especially with a flashback or screwing up with the timeline and all of that, mm-hmm. right? So it makes sense that they get involved from that standpoint in Season 2, from what it looks like they're setting up. But who knows? Uh, make a good story, good characters, right? That's all we care about. Uh, two other news stories. Um, yeah, I lost you for a bit there. Do what? But uh, I think I lost you for a bit there. You were freezing up. Oh, was I? Yeah. So basically, I, I think you were saying as long as it's a good story, who cares? Is that the gist? Yeah, good story, good yeah. characters, right? Let's let's make it good stories, good characters. So, uh, okay, a couple of other news stories, um, both from Sci-Fi Wire. Uh, Engage, every Star Trek series ranked. Um, that's a good article. I'm going to post that up somewhere, probably either on the Discord or just part of the, a link in the show or something. But uh, that's kind of a fun one to go through and just ranking all the series. We've done this before, um, but it's kind of interesting to do it again every once in a while, especially now that we've got a bunch of new series to add into it that are all at the bottom of the list except for Lower Decks. So, <laughs> I mean, let's just be honest. Uh, they rank number 10 as the animated series, so that's kind of fun. Uh, <laughs> number 9 is the shorts. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Anyway, that's a good one to argue over. Uh, and then, of course, there's a new comic series uh, coming out from IDW uh, called uh, Mirror Wars, I believe is what it's called. Uh, this is also on Sci-Fi Wire. And this one's interesting because it brings back that old concept of uh, you know Jean-Luc being one of the main guys in the Terran Empire and being, uh, you know, the tactical diplomacy unit, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's kind of fun. Um, and the art cover work on the front of it has a yelling Picard with his hand up, you know, screaming, and then Troy in the background holding a skull. I mean, it's, you know, uh, he's just, Data he's, being half integrated. He's saying, as a uh, he's saying make it so. He's yeah. just saying it really <laughs> aggressively. Yeah. Yeah, it's called the Mirror War. Um I don't recall if uh, when I was looking at this, if it says it's... Oh, no. Uh, first issue comes out in October. Oh, issues one through eight uh, come out in October. So that's quite a bit, pretty fast. Wow. 
So fun, fun. Okay. They've got a couple of pages up on the uh, eight eight issues all coming out at once. That's what it sounds like. I mean, what does it say they're right drop, here? They're dropping comic books Netflix style. Yeah. The IDW's main series launches in October with issues number one through eight and four interwoven tie-in specials, each one spotlighting a different Next Generation cast member. December's spinoff focuses on the charismatic droid Android Data. So they're making a big one here. Um, brings in the Klingon Cardassian Alliance as part of this. Interesting. That'd be kind of fun. Oh, yeah, I noticed that. I just noticed that now. The skulls that they're all standing on top of or, the, or that Troy is holding are Cardassian and Klingon. So... Huh, fun, fun. Okay. Looks cool. Uh, that's it I got for the news on my end, uh, things that I had looked at. Yeah, that, I, I don't have anything other than what you had. Okay. I was going to talk about the Borg Queen thing, but yeah, you got it. Yep. You took care of it. There you go. Taking care of business. <laughs> We're going to skip feedback because there is none. I don't even need to play the, the thing. I mean, there's... I got no emails. Maybe Daniel's got some emails on the main account. Uh, I, I don't have that. Um, no emails at the chat is wrong at gmail.com and no voicemails at the phone number, which is 816 287 0448. You can call that number anytime, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 362 days a year, because the other three days don't count. I don't know. 365, sorry. Um, call that number, leave a voicemail. We'll play it on the show. Doesn't matter what you say, it, 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 it will play it. But with that said, I think the voicemail length is only like 45 seconds, and then it just cuts you off, and you get no warning. So, I mean, yeah. so leave multiple. Yeah. Leave yeah, so multiples. Leave multiple. yeah. We'll, string them, we'll string them together. The there magic of editing. With the, yes, with the magic of modern-day editing, we can take two MP3s and play them back-to-back. <laughs> <laughs> I won't even bother stitching them. I'll just play one and play the second. The future is now. <laughs> All right. Oh, ah, you know what I watched? Quick. You know what I watched last? Not last night. The night before. What's that? Um, I finally saw Interstellar. Mm. That I movie is like. Movie. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. That movie is like five years old at this yeah. point, and uh, super cheap me. It was never on any of the streaming services that I had. Oh, really? Um. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't want to pay to rent it. I didn't want to buy the DVD or the Blu-ray. Cause I kind of thought, um, even if it's great, this is the kind of movie I'm going to watch once every 10 years, not, you know, watch it over and over again. Cause yeah, I figured it was, it was cerebral sci-fi, not, yeah. not action packed sci-fi. So, um, just recently it popped up on Paramount plus. I was like, Hey, I have that one. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was like a three hour movie. So it was up half the night. Yeah, the other night, but no, it was good. That was, uh, I like how um, they got the science right. You yeah. know, the the space scenes. There's no sounds. Nope. Because that's how it's supposed to be. Because yep. you don't hear anything in space. Nope. Um, the time, di- all the time dilation stuff was very cool. It gets a little wonky with the <laughs> time backwards messages from the future into the past and all. It gets a little a little bit wonky there, but I mean it, it's t- in, in terms of tough to follow. But mm-hmm. but yeah. 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 I liked it. No, it was, I good. it was good. I enjoyed it. There's a movie coming out next year where it's the exact opposite of Interstellar in terms of it gets the science completely wrong on everything. Uh, and it's and it's called Moonfall with, uh, and I only know this from watching the trailer. So just watching the trailer, I can tell you they got the science wrong because what happens is is the moon crashes into the Earth. Hmm. Somehow okay. people survive this. I mean, what that they're right there. The the uh, <laughs> the science is wrong. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, <laughs> so but it features it's Halle Berry, which is odd that she's in yet another she she seems to want to go back to these sci-fi shows that she does but they're not mm-hmm. really I don't understand why she's picking some of these roles anyway so um money <laughs> what well I was going to say I mean I, has she done much lately maybe her her she did her that star power is, is burning out a little bit and you kind of got to oh, sure. take take what's offered to you it shouldn't be because she's a great actress. Um, she's easy on the eyes, but she's also a great actress, right? I mean, yeah. some of the stuff she's done earlier in her career are really monsters ball. I mean, what a hard movie to watch, but boy, 
Her I don't and, think I ever uh, saw that one. Her and what's his name? Uh, oh, I can picture his name. The guy who had the, the his blood and a necklace around Angelina Jolie's neck for a while. I don't know what that dumbass's name is. Uh, yeah, I'm serious. Yeah, weird, <laughs> weird stuff. I know, I know. <laughs> okay. Uh, what is that guy's huh. name? Anyway. I don't know. Uh, he was on Fargo uh, season one. He played us uh, in Sling Blade, the movie. He was the main. It was like his first breakout role was Sling Blade. Um, uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, anyway, so she's a good actress. I don't know why her star power is faded, but it has. And and uh, Cat, Catwoman. That's that's why her Cat, star power that, faded. There, there's where it is. Yeah, Catwoman. <laughs> well, same thing happened with Anne Hathaway when she played uh, Batgirl or whatever the hell she was in that movie, right? So she was cat. No, Cat-woman. she was Catwoman also. She was Catwoman also. There you go. So. She yeah. just needs to go back to making more Devil Wears Prada. It's funny because she was in Interstellar. She was in Interstellar. It. Yeah. 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 And uh, what's his name? Matt Damon, which I was kind of like, oh, yeah. Matt Damon alone on a planet for years at a time. I yep. feel like I've seen this movie before. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what that means? He just keeps making those kinds of movies. He just wants to be left alone. <laughs> Okay. There are some actors. It's kind of funny. There are some actors where you know that they're playing a character on screen, but they've played that type of character so often, you tend to believe that that's kind of how they are in the real world. Yeah. And in some cases, they are like Vince Vaughn. Yeah. I mean, who you see on screen is Vince Vaughn. <laughs> is Vince Vaughn? I mean, that's just him. Yeah. Same thing with um, what's his name with the broken nose? Uh. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that wow. guy. Yeah. <laughs> Wedding Crashers. Yeah. Yeah. Owen, Owen Wilson. Owen Wilson, there it is. I knew it was yeah. going to come at some yeah. point, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> you know what? So, and some people can break out of that, and some, some people can't. For some years. Some can, yeah. Adam Sandler For cannot. years, I was, uh, yeah. He's, <laughs> for years, I was convinced that uh, Will Smith was a horrible actor because he only played one character. He played Will Smith. Yeah, yeah. Okay, he's playing Will Smith, uh, going to school in, in uh, you know, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Bel- yes, Bel Air. <laughs> then he was then he was playing, you know, Will Smith as a fighter pilot, and then he's playing Will, Will Smith, Smith as a, a as a cop, <laughs> and then Will Smith as a as a you know a government agent hunting aliens. And you know, for years, I was like, I can't watch this guy anymore because yeah. it's just it's Will Smith every time. And what did I see him in recently? Well, there's two movies he's done recently that kind of changed my mind on that, too. One wasn't Suicide Squad. Uh, <laughs> but the first one was Pursuit of Happiness, which was okay. just an incredible movie with him. I mean, talk about making I don't think I saw that one, minutes. but I know, it got, oh. I know it got good reviews. If um, you haven't had, he as played man, Muhammad if you Ali. haven't had a good cry in a few years, go watch that movie, and that'll make you cry. The guy, I mean, okay. that is a tough movie. A good movie, but a tough movie. The other one was Legend, yeah. where he was the last guy in the city or whatever trying to fight against Oh, I am, Legend. I am Legend. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's the one I was good thinking movie. of. I watched him in that. And I was like, "Huh, where's Will Smith? Because I don't see Will Smith. I see I see that guy. I see the character. I see the character. Yeah, yeah. Finally, I see the character. You know, what? I've often thought that of Tom Cruise as well, because Tom Cruise always plays a character that is a lot like Tom Cruise, really. Yeah. But then again, not so much. Like, you really do believe that he's Jack Reacher. You really do believe that he's Maverick. You really do believe, you know, a lot of those different roles, but they all seem to have that same flavor of, of, you know, the firm, right? It's Tom Cruise. And and there's something about that guy yeah. where he kind of looks the same age, even though he's aged 50 years. <laughs> so, yeah. so it's hard to, well, that's, that's, that's the, uh, uh, the blood of the virgins that he drinks. That is Scientology. Scientology. Yeah. Oh Lord. <laughs> oh Lord. Scientology. I mean, this is why I don't want to know anything about actors and actresses because when you find out yeah, information like that, you just can't. Sometimes you just can't look at them the same anymore. Yeah. Well, what's her name that played on the King of Queens? Uh, had this documentary about the Scientology thing here a while ago. Oh, back. I know. Man, I know. she lays it out. She rips those people apart so hard. Um, ugh, what's her name? Renee something or? I don't know her name. I know I know exactly. Who I've you're got talking Renee about Russo in my head now, and that's not her. So. That's that's not her. <laughs> Kira Sedgwick. No, that's not her. Um, <laughs> anyway, you know who else does that? But I don't care. Um, 
Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton has some Michael Keatonisms. Oh yeah, like the way the way he delivers certain lines. It's always yep. You know, it takes you out of it for a moment. Don't care though. And you're like, I don't love care though because he's such a he's such a good yep. actor. Yeah. Yep. yep. Got to love Michael Keaton. I mean, <sighs> yeah. I'm looking forward to this. Uh, Flash movie where he's Batman again. I think that's going to be interesting. Yeah, when does to... that come out? I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> Do we know anything? I don't know. I, I, st- I don't know because I don't. I, you can't. You can't put your faith in anything anymore. Now they're saying Spider Man's going to be pushed back to March. Yep. And the thing with Marvel movies is, you push one back, you got to push them all so back. Moving them be- because because they all, you know, they all. Uh, yep. They all built on the on on the previous yep. one. Yeah, there was an article and I was now, reading the other you know, night they're, where they're putting so much stuff out, they're putting out so many series yep. on Disney Plus that it's not just the movie release schedule you have to be concerned with now. It's hey, does this affect? Yep. You know this uh, uh, this eight weeks of television that we have right coming out. So yeah, I was reading an article uh, sometime this week, maybe it was a week before, I forget when, but it was here recently about how. You know, Marvel is a victim of their own success. They can't move things anymore. There's too much money tied up, too many things that interweave with one another that are tied up, whether it's the series that are getting released on Disney+, Plus, whether it's the movies going to straight to streaming or theaters. All these things are tied for their storyline. And so it's so intermixed that they, they just they, they can't. There's nothing they can do. They have to release these things. Maybe if they pushed everything back, all of it, six months, three months, they might be able to handle some of that. But if they do any more than that, they're going to lose their butts. So they have to just start yeah. letting it go. And that's that's the problem with the pro- the problem is the next big one coming down the, the pipeline is Spider-Man. And it's not just up to them. They yeah. share that with Sony. Yeah. So they can't just decide, all right, we're going to move this to this. No, nope. it's yeah. it's, you know, two giants that have to have a meeting to figure this stuff out can you imagine the boardroom meeting over that i mean that's what's crazy when you think about some of these things that we watch right we're just sitting down in front of our tv to watch a show two hours two and a half hours it's just something that's on our television at home in our house right but the amount of time money thought bullshit questions all this other and the number of people and the amount of dollars tied up into it that made that two hours just those two hours of you watching it is astronomical, but you could sit there and do, and there's enough content getting put out every day that you can't, you couldn't watch, uh, how, the, the amount of content that comes out every day, you yourself couldn't watch in your lifetime, that one day. Yeah. It's just insane. Yeah. It's just, it's overwhelming. I sometimes, I'm sometimes in awe of, not to keep going back to Marvel, yeah. but I'm sometimes in awe that, they are able to pull this off yeah. because at this point we're talking about um, this is 15 years worth of planning that's gone into this, you know, 20 something films, you know, 12 series and, and, it, and it's all interwoven and, you know, multiple, multiple companies with, with rights issues yeah. and, and, and licensing it. It's, it's amazing that it even happened. And up until now, it's all been extremely profitable. It's all been extremely yeah. successful up until now. And the only thing that yeah. took it off the rails was COVID. You know, I mean, even yeah. the movies you would think they're going to make a Thor. When they first announced they're going to make a Thor movie, I was kind of like, they're going to make a Thor movie? What the hell? They're going to make Guardians of the Galaxy? What? What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> what are they thinking? These guys are idiots. I mean, Iron Man was good, but come on. this is They're kind of yeah. reaching a little far down into the bottom of the bucket, aren't they? Well, it, I, mean, they I mean, even Iron Man. Iron, pr- prior to the MCU, Iron Man was, you know, he was like a second tier yeah. guy over there at Marvel. Yeah. But all the first tier guys, well, not all of them, but most of the first tier guys, the rights had been sold yep. to other companies. Yep. You know, if you think about it, at the time when they were planning Iron Man, the X Men were over at Fox, yeah. Spider Man was over at Sony, Fantastic Four was was over at uh, Fox with all related characters. So Dying that's Galactus, the Silver Surfer. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, Ghost Rider was was elsewhere. 
Um, even the Hulk, the rights to the Hulk yeah. were at another company. They had to, you know, do some moving and shaking to make that I happen. Really did. So, I really did enjoy that. So first the, Hulk movie it was too. the bottom of the I did too. Yeah. I rewatched it last week with my son. But um you know, it wasn't really the bottom of the barrel. It was well, what's left in this barrel? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they and they really turned it into diamonds. I mean, they really did. I mean, yeah. Grow, we've had this discussion so many times, but I mean, growing up as a kid, uh, DC was the uh, you know in the eighties and nineties, even in the seventies, eighties and nineties, DC was it. That was Superman and Wonder Woman. I mean, that was the Batman. I mean, that was the outside of the comic book yeah. shop. Marvel always outsold them, always. Yeah. But. Other media outside of the comic book yeah. shop, you're right. It was yep. always DC. Always DC. They were the big you know, dogs. Tw- 25 years ago, 25 years ago, if you just pointed to a random person on the street and said, "Name three superheroes," they'd say, "Batman, Superman, All Wonder DC. Woman." DC. Yep. Yeah. It's totally flipped on its head. And that has that has flipped. Yep. I mean, I'm sure everybody, with the exception at this point, of Batman. Yeah, I mean, sure, sure, everybody at this point still knows those three: Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman. Especially with the Wonder Woman movies now, but but uh, yeah. But at the same time, Iron Man. Right up there with all of those. Yeah. Peter Quill, for God's sakes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, so all very good stuff. Okay, let's, uh, you ready to get on? None, none of which has anything to do with Star Trek. Well, it does, but it doesn't. <laughs> so it kind of goes, it kind of goes back to a little bit of planning, a little bit of forethought, right? Look what that did for Marvel. Yeah. And look how look how DCU whatever the DCEU did not do that. They did not do any yeah. planning or forethought. Know, they just said I let's know. skip it's right a... to an Avengers movie. And they totally screwed themselves. It's a train wreck Correct. over there. Correct. And now on the other side of that, look at what Star Wars has done to itself, right? And now look what Trek is doing. Okay? So all four of these properties kind of have the same kind of thing going on where they're trying to create and broaden the base for their franchise. They're trying to recreate and re-broaden the base for their franchise. Whether you want to call it a new era, a new generation, we call it new Trek, you know, all those kinds of things. Um, They're all four trying to do something. Actually, all three of those are trying to do what Marvel did. I'll just, I mean, that's the truth. Everybody watched what Marvel did and said, oh shit, we better do that. (laughs) <laughs> so i mean the, the movies the rebooted movies for for trek uh the new cast and all of that 2009 that was a great opening salvo for that and they could have kept going with that had they not just completely cratered in, in the second movie with into darkness i mean that was just yeah. god because beyond was great beyond was a great movie I, I liked it i liked it <laughs> You know, you know how I judge. You know how I judge it. Um, I saw it once, and then someone got me the Blu-ray for Christmas yeah. about five years ago, and I never opened it. <laughs> so, no, no, I'm yeah. serious. I could literally, you know, I own it. Forget the streaming. You know, the internet could go down. I could watch that movie. Anytime I yeah. want to. And I have never, ever, ever had the inclination to, to go back to it. Not once. Yeah. yeah. And in, into darkness, uh, similar. Well, yeah. You know, I saw it in the, I saw it in the theater and I was like, this is kind of shitty. <laughs> and then it, it, <laughs> it came out on, on disc. I bought it on disc because at the time, you know, I was buying everything that came out on right. disc. Um, Watched it once, and I was like, hey, this is still kind of <laughs> shitty. And it went on the shelf, and that's where it's been. Yeah. I've seen that movie twice. Yeah. I think I've seen all three of them at least a couple of times, but uh, Into Darkness, I- I'll probably never, ever watch that again. I think I've seen it two or three, maybe. Uh, but I've watched the first one, oh. and I've watched Beyond at least three or four times. Well, the first one, the, I'm sure the I've The first one, 2009, um, I've probably seen it ten times. Yeah. yeah. It's got problems. Don't get me oh, wrong. Sure. It's got problems. Sure. There are things. There are things wrong with that movie. There are things that bother me every time I watch yeah. that movie. A lot of it is is you know military protocol type stuff. <laughs> but uh, hey, there's a stray dog walking down the street. Hold on. Alrighty. 
Well, this wouldn't be TrekCast without a stray dog or the neighbor uh, yelling at somebody or the mother-in-law coming over to visit Dan uh, right in the middle of the show where he bails out of the shuttlecraft and, and goes and takes off and does something else. But <laughs> this just wouldn't be TrekCast without that. So, I mean, my point, though, um, that I was getting back to, and, and Dan will, I'll, I'll fill Dan in when he comes back, but my point that I was getting to is that all these different franchises have – kind of a, a layout here of what they're trying to do to expand that base. Right. Oh, he's got the stray dog with him in the car. That's amazing. Okay, you just I'm, rescued the dog? I just rescued this dog out of the street. Yeah. Um, I don't know who he belongs to. He does not have a tag. <laughs> so, let's uh, see if someone comes. Yeah, let's do some trek ass until the end. <laughs> Well, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and get into the topic then, and, and see how we roll with that. Okay. All <laughs> right. Dog look in your face. <laughs> yeah. All right. So of course we're talking about lower decks. Um, I forget what episode this is of Lower Decks. Uh, number four in the season. So season two, episode number four, Mugato Gamato. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> tomato, tomato, Mugato. Exactly, yeah. So basically the premise of the, uh, of the episode is that uh, the Cerritos is on another mission where they've got to go and round up stray animals for some reason. <laughs> like yep. apparently... Stray animals! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Boy, that works out perfect, doesn't it? That's funny. That's this guy's name. We're going to call him Mugatu. Mugatu, there you go. Um, how funny. Anyway, but that's the... Num- that's the uh, I mean, how coincidental is that? <laughs> I mean, that just makes you kind of wonder, like, the universe is just conspiring. I don't know. So, at any rate... Um, Apparently they get a lot of these missions where they got to go pick up stray animals somehow, <laughs> and yeah, they get to the yeah. planet. Yeah, she's like, we're on another stray animal mission. Yeah, or yeah she's getting all upset. Uh, one thing I don't understand is they're lower deckers, right? So how come they're always on the away teams? <laughs> yeah, like, they always are. But anyway, well, I mean, but they're shitty missions. They are shitty missions. Yeah. You know, it's not first contact missions no. or, or second, you contact. know, important missions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're. Hi, hello. You're shaking. <laughs> but no, so they and it's a Mugato uh, that they've got to go down and, and help or whatever. And it turns out the Ferengi are down there, and it's the Ferengi from yesteryear. <laughs> and even the, yeah, even Mariner yep. refers to it. <laughs> the Ferengi <laughs> from 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 whatever she mentions the episode title or something, and, and says, "Oh, you guys yeah. with your whips, you're so backwards." Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> so funny. But uh, I mean. It's it's a kind of a throwaway episode. Um, there's not much, yeah. you know, that impacts anything overall, other than Shax is there and having an active role, and there's no conversation yeah. about that. So we're just done with that. Yeah. He's back. It's I all think good. That's gonna be a We've thing. moved on. Yep. Hey, were those Denobulans that blew their blew their heads up real I big? I think they were. At yeah, the they were Denobulans. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because at first I saw them and I thought, well, that's a funny way to draw a Cardassian. But then they blew their heads up. And I'm like, no, nope, that's a Denobulan. <laughs> that's Doctor Flox's family. Yeah. So that was hysterical. <laughs> but uh, no, so they they all go down to the planet. They're trying to find these uh, Mugato and get them off the planet or round them up or whatever. And that's when they find that the Ferengi are there salvaging their horns or their tusks, if you will, uh, yep. for profit. Um, and then hilarity ensues. So <laughs> the whole time, uh, Boimler and uh, Rutherford seem to think that Mariner is like an undercover secret agent... Um, Section Thirty One Spy Master Killer. Hey, so yep. Hey, there's there's somebody walking by. Let me see if this All is right, their yeah, dog. Go find their dog. Yeah, go find the dog's uh, parents. <laughs> oh man, it's always something on this show. <laughs> Gotta love it. At any rate, that's the setup anyway um, for the show. They beam down um, to try to find these uh, Mugatu, and then of course the Ferengi are there, and, and everything else happens uh, from that standpoint on. So. I want to wait for Dan to come back before I talk about the uh, the scene. There's one scene in this episode, man. Holy cow! I mean, it is it is Rick and Morty almost. I mean, it is it is it is a uh, Cartoon Network after dark kind of stuff. Uh, and it's surprising that they went this far, but uh, we'll we'll talk about it uh, in depth when uh, Dan gets back in the shuttlecraft uh, comes from his excursion. But at any rate, um, we'd love to get your guys' feedback on this episode and whether or not that went too far or not. 
if you're okay with it or not. Um, give us that feedback at the TrekCastTNG at gmail.com or the chat is wrong at gmail.com or even on our Facebook group. Uh, we've got a huge group over there. Uh, make sure you get involved in that if you're not already. That's where half the show, third of the show happens with all of our conversations with everybody over there, uh, as well as um, the Instagram account, which is now, I believe, over 4,100 uh, people subscribing to the Instagram account, which is a ton, TrekCastTNG over on Instagram. Uh, at some point, Daniel's going to probably wind up taking over the Twitter and the uh, TikTok uh, account that I started because I'm not on either one of those and won't be. Um, so, I mean, hey, we're still on Twitter. There's an account. Um, we'll be posting the, the shows when they come live over there. It's TrekCastTNG on uh, Twitter as well. Then, of course, there's the Discord channel that I started because I live on Discord anymore, both for games and just the people I know and the little communities that I have uh, on different stuff. So, um, I created a Discord for TrekCast, and it's just TrekCast. The link for it is up on Twitter. Uh, we'll put it up on Facebook again, because I think those links to invite you to a private server, because that's what a Discord server is, it's a private server, um, they expire like every seven days. So I have to put up new links constantly um, in order for them to be active, for you to be able to join. Right now I think we've got about 30 guys over there. It's a lot of fun. Uh, if you don't know anything about Discord, it's fine. You'll have to create account, an account um, but uh, to get on there, but you know, if you know something about Discord, obviously, come join. It's a lot of fun. And we're able to do things on Discord that you just can't do on social media. <laughs> so one of which is to do a live stream of an episode of Trek and watch it all together and commentate on it in real time on our own private server. Uh, we can moderate it ourselves a little better than what you can on Facebook. And, of course, they're not taking all of our data and watching everything we say and all that BS, right? So, um I know Daniel will cringe when he goes back and listens to this and hears me say this, but at least on that server, uh, I feel like I'm free to say whatever I want. Even if someone thinks it's politically incorrect or doesn't agree with me, fine. Say what you want. I'm not going to delete it. I'm not going to not let you post. And we can argue <clears throat> openly and uh, you know, actually have a little bit of a quote-unquote discord right, um, about a topic. And I'm fine with that. I don't care. So... Everybody's free to put up their own opinions, and no one's going to be no one's going to be watching it, copying and pasting it, and doing all that BS. So, um, speak your mind. That's my feelings on it. All right. So uh, back to lower decks because uh, I think Dan might have uh, actually found the owner to the the stray dog. Um, so another family reunited. Very good. Very good. Mugatu's home. Sorry about that. It's okay. The, the, the people walking by, they, it wasn't their dog, but they knew whose it was. So I just had to run down the block. Oh, and, cool. And, uh, yeah. So. Very nice. We'll have to do a edit or something. Oh, I talked the whole time. There. Oh, did yeah. you? <laughs> All of the last 10 <laughs> seconds or so, 15 seconds. <laughs> so. Sorry. Then I'll, then I'll have to listen to the show yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> see what you were talking about. See what you were saying. Yeah, I mean, or, or maybe Daniel will cut it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh nah he's a dog guy yeah he, yeah. he won't no. cut it out he'll he'll appreciate it no i mean like what i was saying while so. you were gone <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah the rest of it's all good it's just... <laughs> all right so no get back to lower decks where are um we? So I kind of walked through the synopsis of what uh, what the show was gonna what what the episode was, and you know what the, what it was. So now we okay. can talk about the fun parts. Yep. And, I, and one of the things I said was we, you know, I want some feedback uh, for because there's a controversial, in my opinion, this is a little bit controversial scene that they they pull off, and it's, it's surprising that they did this scene, especially the way they did it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, it's like how yeah. far are they gonna if they went yeah. that far? How far are they gonna go? How often are they gonna do something that goes that far? And should they? Right. So well. It's tough because they're they were animals. Yeah, yeah. They were essentially animals. So it's the equivalent of, you know, a comedy film and they and they pan the camera to the backyard and there's a dog on top of another right, dog. Right. Okay. And is it inappropriate? But maybe it depends on the film. It depends on the rating of the film. It depends on the tone of the film. You know, but it's it was one animal on top of another. It wasn't. But that part was okay. It wasn't. It wasn't Riker doing that to right. Troy. Um, the next. The scene, next part of it, where they go the next step, <laughs> that's what's kind of. I mean, they just doubled down on it. 
Yeah, when he was <laughs> stroking his horn. Yeah, literally. And we, <laughs> his eyes and were we all know. Ugly. <laughs> and Boimler just says, oh, he likes to watch. Oh, he likes to watch. <laughs> I mean, okay. Okay. <laughs> And then uh, when they fall asleep afterwards, and he's like, wow, even the watcher. Yeah, or yeah. Whatever. <laughs> all sleeping together, yeah. Yeah, like he took his watching all, all the way. All the way, yeah. <laughs> all the way. I mean, it's funny. Yeah. It's hysterical. It's, it is it's funny. an eye-opener, it is, but. It is funny. I'm torn because it is yeah. funny. It is very funny. But I, I also I can't shake the, the the feeling that it's, it's beneath the franchise. A little bit, right? A little bit. I think yeah. I'm right there with you on that yeah. same that same token. Like I thought it was funny. I'm okay with it. But at the same time, do I want to see that regularly in Trek? Not really. No, that's not. Then again, yeah. Lower Decks is so completely different, right? It's not even the animated series. It's 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 a it's an animated series itself, but it's not the original animated series, right? It does not yeah, take itself yeah. seriously. It does not take canon seriously. It likes to poke fun at everything Trek while enjoying everything Trek. So, I mean, I'm kind of okay with it, but at the same time, it's kind of yeah. not not something I want to see him do a lot. Well, I, I guess I'll put it this way. The way that they did it, some people might not like it, and some people might think, like, like you said, it's beneath them, but the way they did it was hysterical and had no taste, which was, which was great. And as long as when... <laughs> As long as they only do it that way, I'm okay with yeah. it. But if it just gets thrown in every once in a while for stupid gags or whatever, um, and and doesn't, you know what I mean? Like I don't I don't want to see it all the time. Like, it was it was it was out out there. It was it was uh, oh my gosh, they're really going there moment. And it, and if they keep that rare like that, and it's a surprise like that, then fine. If they're doing it every show, then that's you know another story. I kind I kind of look at lower decks. As an in-house parody of Star <laughs> yeah. Trek, that's kind of how I look at it. And I know they've said that it's 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 canon, and I've said before that I think it's one-way canon. Yeah, yeah. That you know quote. they're they're you know they're pulling from from Trek lore. Trek lore. Trek will never pull from lower lower decks. I think they and... can though. I think they could, and it, it, but they wouldn't do it from like a here's the live version of of us, uh, you know lower decks but instead it's just someone makes a reference to somebody in one of the future yeah things. yeah um and i think i'm okay with it if i think of it that yeah, way yeah. if i think of it as a as a parody it's a parody of star trek that just happens to be made by the same people that that make the real thing if i continue to look at it like that i think i'm okay yeah, with it yeah. but um yeah, it was crass. It was. <laughs> it was hysterical, though. That was about the it only. Was. You know, you know. A lot of times when I'm watching Lower Decks, I do laugh. I mean, there's plenty of times when I laugh or get a little chuckle here and there. That episode, not so much, except for that. That I laughed at. Everything yeah. else was kind of like, eh, it's just the normal, panned whatever funny little humor here and there, and I didn't really laugh at much of it. But that one I did. So I don't know. Maybe I'm watching Rick and Morty too much. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay, episode throwaway it's... episode though. Um, you know, obviously the Shax thing is is uh, is done and over with, and he's just there, and we have to deal with it. Although we did get to see what's his name uh, sparring uh, when Mariner beats the crap out of the two of them. Um, the security chief, he was there. The not Timba, but the other guy, um, the new security chief, who's the uh, oh the yeah yeah. Can you even yep. think of Tamarian? The Tamarian, the Tamarian, that's what it was. Guy. I was gonna say Timba, but yeah. it's not Timba. It's Tamarian. Yeah. Tamba, his eyes yeah, open. Yeah. <laughs> oh god, uh, I got a story there, but yeah. I won't because it's so off topic. Anyway, um, right. so, but anyway, uh, no, yeah, he's there. Tempa's there, and he's fighting. So I mean, he's still there. He's still the security chief, I guess. And Shaq's rank is what? I don't know. I mean, they'll have to clear that up at some point, but um, maybe not. You would think? I think they should. I I. S- Pose, they could have one of them as the security chief and the other one as the tactical officer. Yeah, you could split up those duties. So, you know, 
Uh, one of them performs like police and security functions on the ship and on away yeah. teams and the other one fires torpedoes right. when it you know when it calls for it i suppose you could split up those duties who is also the same person um because, which which is <laughs> not yeah. a good thing for warp to well, do. although that was what was brilliant about shack so oh, can i really i've been a good boy this month <laughs> <laughs> i just want to fire once but i mean they have referred to wharf as yeah. both over seven yeah. years. Sometimes he's referred to as the tactical officer. Sometimes he's referred to as the security yeah. chief. Uh, it could be one of those things where he just happens to perform both of those functions. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see how they, we'll see what they do. I have a feeling they won't do anything. It'll just be whatever it is, right? Because again, the show's about the lower yeah. decks, not the upper upper levels and all of that. Although we see an awful lot of her mom. I mean, she is a main portion of yeah. every episode. So, yeah. Uh, which is okay, I suppose, because she's so happy. I mean, she's so <laughs> stupid sometimes. And I think, <laughs> I think it's an in. I think it's it's probably an an in joke, in that, um, you know, the the lower decks they're they're not entitled to have all their yeah. questions answered about what happens upstairs. Right. And we as uh, we as the viewer we see this story through their eyes, so we're not entitled to know either. So we may never know. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Well, that's fine. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. So we still got, what, six so, episodes left of the season? I think, I think so. Yeah, it's ten. All right. Yep. Do they do, uh, do, they do trailers? Do they do previews? They don't. I, they don't. Yeah, okay. I always find that odd. But Well, I don't recall if they did that last season or not. I thought they did. Because it seems odd to me that there's not a single trailer after any of these this year. But, mm. yeah, it is what it is. But we'll have a lot to discuss next week, obviously, with Daniel being, hopefully Daniel being back. I assume he'll be uh, on the men's by then and be ready to go. Um, and then, uh, of course, with Star Trek Day coming up on Wednesday, don't forget about that. Was it 8, 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time or 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time? Uh, for when that airs, uh, just be ready at 8. And, and where it's going to air, uh, I assume, on StarTrek.com. And if it's not there, it'll be on YouTube. I mean, you'll be able to find it. All so right. I didn't say cool. specifically where that live streaming event's going to happen, but I would assume it'll be right there on their website, StarTrek.com. So, All right. Very good. Anything else we cool. need to go over? No, I think that's it. Cool. I'm going to go re rescue a couple more dogs. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> well, good luck with this. <laughs> and then sir. have lunch. Yeah. <laughs> All right, take care. All right, so that wasn't terrible. No, that wasn't bad. No, we we managed. We managed. <laughs> it wasn't right. It wasn't right, but it wasn't no, terrible. No, it never either. feels right when there's not all three of us. No, so yeah. it is what it is. So, all right. So we'll talk all soon. Right, take care, man. We'll see you later. Live long and prosper. Live long and prosper. <laughs>